right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Dr. Nadia Brown, who is in Phoenix, Arizona. How are you doing, Nadia? I'm wonderful. Thanks for having me. Yeah, and Nadia founded the Doyen Agency, a global uh, sales and sales training company. And what we're going to talk about today is why courage may be, or actually is, the most critical sales quality we need. So let's get straight into it, Nadia. When you when you talk about courage, what do you mean by that? And, you know, I think about um, just willing, the willingness to move in spite of the fear, in spite of any concerns that we have. Um, when you think about sales and sales conversations, that brings up concerns around rejection, um, you know, and hearing the word no. And so just having the courage to be willing to put yourself out there is definitely a needed sales skill. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, it is one of the if one of the toughest jobs out there uh, because of exactly what you just said, because of the rejection. And I think the other part, too, is that a lot of people default into sales as a career. Uh, you know, we uh, I mean, now it's been addressed a little bit where there's more sales uh, courses in, in universities and colleges. But once upon a time, it's like uh, practically 90 percent of the people who did marketing ended up their first job in sales. So they kind of come into it unprepared. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I mean, therefore, I think that's part of why, uh, you know, they don't, as I said, they default into it. Therefore, it's a, once they end up in sales, it's quite a scary place to be at times. It is. I think about my, my journey. I too was one of those folks that did, did not ever plan to be a sales professional. Um, and part of it was because I had so many misconceptions around sales. I've had my own experiences that were kind of coloring my perception of sales professionals. And the last thing I wanted to be considered was a salesperson. And so once I found myself in that role and actually found a way to flourish, it was quite surprising. And it was just like, okay, what, what's the difference maker? And courage was definitely one of those things. Yeah, no, I, I, absolutely. And I think, uh, and I think today it's even more complicated in some ways because number one we feel that we are busier than we've ever been so that when a salesperson calls it's like oh the last thing we want to do is talk to them I always say we're not that actually busier we're just more distracted because we have more things that we can Agreed. that can take our attention <laughs> our, our attention away so it can be even tougher now to get somebody's attention so the rejection rate uh, probably has gone up if anybody's done a a study on that. So how do you how do you develop and dig deep and find the courage and the resilience to keep going when the going gets really tough? That's a great question. One thing that I encourage people to do is to celebrate the fact that they had the courage to put themselves out there in the first place. Um, I think sometimes as a sales professional, there's so much pressure on getting the yes, closing the deal, moving things forward that we don't take the time to celebrate or acknowledge the fact that we did our part. Um, we can't control when our clients finally say yes. <laughs> if we could, mm -hmm. we would all be like gajillionaires, right? Like, yes, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. but we can't control our actions and us putting ourselves out there. And so I encourage sales professionals to pause, you know, and take a moment to acknowledge the things that they can control and not to focus so much on the things that they cannot control. Yeah, I, I think that's a great that's a great point to, to make, uh, because I also think that uh, if you can look back, so say you've had a, an unsuccessful day today or an unsuccessful week or month, but if you can look back and honestly say, I did everything I could possibly do, then I think, yeah, you, you should be able to take a pause and go, okay, it didn't, I'm building, I'm building towards the success, right? I did everything I could possibly do and I'm building towards and it'll come. Um, as long as you can honestly look yourself in the eye and say, yes, I, I did everything I, I could possibly do. Agreed, agreed. And I think, you know, sometimes that's why we're looking at our pipeline. We're looking at, you know, understanding how quickly or how slowly, you know, deals move through the pipeline. Um, and like you said, just, you know, being able to sit back at the end of the day or the end of the week and say, you know, I did all that I could do. And I also think, you know, we understand after you've done this a while, 
that there are times when it finally just pops, right? <laughs> and things just start ro rocking and rolling. So it takes time to really build that momentum. And I think sometimes we, we want to throw in a towel too quickly. Yeah, no, I, I, absolutely. And that's where I think, and that's where I think, again, coming back to the topic of courage, I mean, you have to have the courage to to keep going. And sometimes, uh, even when there's no signs that anything is is going in your favor, you have to still pick yourself up every day and go in. And, and, and I think the other thing, um, Nadia, and you probably agree, is, is that nowadays people want more authenticity, they want more connection, they want more um, realism from the people they engage with. So mm -hmm. not only do you have to pick yourself up, but you got to kind of be the best version of yourself every time. Absolutely. Yeah. It's kind of challenging sometimes because, like you said, people are looking for that authenticity and you don't necessarily want to be that authentic when things are looking, you know, not the way you want them to look like you don't want to be the Debbie Downer. Um, yeah. And so and, and you just don't want to put that negative self-talk out there in the atmosphere. So it is that balance between um, almost having to give yourself the locker room talks every morning, like, all right, we're going to go in, we're going to do our thing, we're going to stay focused. Um, and not allow, you know, how things may look currently to deter you. Yeah, and I think something else that you touched on um, earlier was this idea of things that are within your control and things that are without your control and uh, or outside of your control. And I think sometimes it's very tempting as human beings, it's very tempting for us to look at all the things outside of our control and go, well, it's the economy, clearly, it's COVID, it's this, it's that. We can come up with a thousand different things that we can't impact. We can't change the economy right now. We can't reduce inflation. We can't fix COVID. Um, so you have to kind of um, not allow yourself to focus on those things and just accept, yes, those are things I can control. Now, let me look at what I can do. Absolutely, absolutely. And I've seen that, you know, even in the midst of the pandemic, like really having to be quite innovative and willing yeah. to shut off the noise. I don't know how many of my colleagues are like, we don't watch the news, we don't, you know, like there are just <laughs> certain things that they're doing to keep their mental space clear because if not, that will take you down a dark, scary path that, mm -hmm. you know, that will definitely impact your results. Uh, yeah, and actually you, you, you just touched on one of my, uh, one of my soapbox ones there is that, uh, yeah, if, if you're going to have a successful a successful day and a successful mindset, if you wake up in the morning, reach for your phone and either go on the news. And as you said, I mean, the, let's face it, the news is not designed and it doesn't matter where you sit on the political spectrum. It's not designed to inform. It's designed to provoke emotion. Mm -hmm. uh, and therefore, if you are, and let's face it, chances are it'll provoke a negative emotion. So if you want to start your day like that, um, well, knock yourself out, but it's not going to help you. And the second thing is social media. I don't think you should start your day with social media really either, um, because that's a that sets up these false comparisons and people go, oh, yeah, my sales are down. But look at you look at Nadia. She yeah. looks like she's on a yacht somewhere, you know, right. and you may just have been standing beside that yacht at the time. <laughs> totally. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. And people make these snap judgments about what's really going on when they see things on social media. And I've been there, I've had people say, you know, things must be really going well. And little mm -hmm. did they know at that time, things were a hot mess behind the scenes, you know, <laughs> just trying to keep myself out there and keep going. And so we, we never really know. So we definitely should not compare when we see social media. Yeah, and and I just think that we should we should uh, we should be careful what we fill our heads with, you know, how we nourish our brains, and particularly as you said, particularly in sales when you need that positive energy. So if you're feeding yourself with anything other than positive energy, you're already starting off like behind the starting line. Absolutely, absolutely, so true. Yeah. yeah. So when you when you work when you work with people, how do you get them to? as you said, like shut off the noise and really get focused on the things that they should be focused on, the things that you know will will pay dividend eventually? Oh my gosh, very challenging. Um, I think, you know, one is providing people with the context and the tools to be able to, to make those shifts um, and then constantly reminding them. Like, I think we all need those reminders, like focus mm -hmm. here, don't focus over there. Um, and then, you know, taking those steps we uh, provide different trainings. I have a resource called the Courage Diary, which encourages you to really, you know, track those conversations, pay attention to your emotions, things that are coming up that could completely derail you. Um, but again, also focusing on the fact that you had the courage to put yourself out there. 
Um, so we work really closely with our clients and one is, is keeping them focused and two, helping them create systems that can also support them in moving your, their deals through the pipeline. Yeah, and I love that. Uh, I love that idea of the courage diary because yeah, it's a uh, because it, it, again, I think human nature being what it is, we're very quick to pass over all the things that we do well or mm-hmm. or when we are courageous or when we keep sticking at it and that we push that to the side and we look at all the all the bad stuff. I think I, I read somewhere one time in Psychology Today that like seventy percent could be higher. I can't remember of our daily self talk is negative. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's a big portion of it. So you have to almost be, like you said, very intentional from the start of your day. Don't pick up the phone and check emails. That was my biggest one. I would literally wake up out of bed and, you know, jump right in the email. And some days it would just make my day really frantic because I'm jumping into whatever demands are there. So, you know, being very intentional about how you get your day started, but then also being very intentional and the things that you do throughout the day. So, you know, listening to positive um, encouraging words or music or, you know, having things on your desk or in your office to keep you focused on the positive. Because let me tell you, there's a lot of negative out there <laughs> waiting to grab you and take you down. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, the other thing that you mentioned there about is recognizing the things that can derail you. And I, and I think that this is a really, really important thing. And it's something that, uh, unfortunately, uh, a lot of people don't uncover until it's too late. But what are those things that can derail you? What are the things that trigger you? Because again, these are things that are within your control. If mm-hmm. you get triggered by certain things, you want to look at where does that come from? Absolutely. And you know, because I think sales and being a sales professional brings up so much when you're in those conversations. And that's why I encourage people, you know, after a conversation, take a moment to debrief with yourself. You know, what are those mm-hmm. statements or those catchphrases? Like I remember for me, one of the phrases that really started to derail me and caused me to emotionally and kind of mentally check out during a sales conversation was if someone used the words, I can't afford it. Like I had so much judgment around that and what people meant by that. And it wasn't until I really started to pay attention to my own self-talk during those conversations. And I was like, Nadia, what is that all about? Because Mm -hmm. I've had people say it and then they still purchased, you know? So it doesn't always mean that they can't afford it. But if I were to always take it at face value and mentally check out, then I would never be able to really get to what's under it. So I agree, taking the time to really pay attention to those emotions and those thoughts and those things that come up, because that's what really can take you out. No, absolutely. And sometimes it's as simple as a look or an action that somebody takes and which could be completely and which normally is completely innocent and totally unrelated to you. But somehow you manage to appropriate it. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And so that's why I encourage clients, pay attention to these things, pay attention to the patterns, pay attention to the the self-talk that's coming up, because those, like you said, those are things that are in your control. And when you get to the bottom of it, that will no longer be a sticking point in your sales conversation. Yeah, no, absolutely. As I would say, I mean, you've got to check your baggage, uh, you know, check your baggage. Don't carry it on the plane. Check your baggage when you go into a sales call. (laughs) That's so true. And the other thing I think it's been interesting, and I'd love to get your take on this as well, is obviously a lot of salespeople over the last while have had to adjust to selling virtually. Mm-hmm. And and that and that has been and that's had an interesting dynamic. I mean, some people have taken to it, it's just another medium, they're fine. Some people who are great can walk into a room uh, full of people and like command it and are so confident. You put them on a Zoom camera and they're like, uh, I don't know what to do here. You're and right. they almost get get scared of it. So, I mean, what have, what have you seen and have you helped people adjust to this work? Because it's going to be, it's some people are going to be selling online forever and some people are going to be hybrid. So it's something mm-hmm. that they have to master. So how do you help people with that? Oh my goodness. I definitely tell them to pay attention um, and also to see how they can shift it in their mind and not make it such the elephant in the room. Because I was one of those folks that a lot of my sales were, Um, in person. And so, you know, to then go strictly uh, virtual has definitely had its moments of, okay, this is different. Mm -hmm. Um, I also think, you know, just having more of an experimental attitude towards it versus being so rigid and it has to be a certain way until you kind of get your legs under you is also something that I encourage clients to do. Like, just kind of have fun with it. Don't be so stiff, you know, and just kind of, you know, how do you make this not feel so overwhelming or so scary 
because it is, while it is different, it can actually be a good thing. And so let's look for the positive in it and not just focus on the negative. Yeah, yeah. And let's be honest. I mean, most people, even those people who, uh, you know, struggle with it a little bit or have issues with it, I guarantee you in their personal lives, they're probably FaceTiming, they're doing Insta stories or all of this. Yep. So it's uh, so all it, it, it's again, it's sometimes we separate everything too much, you know, between, you know, our, our life outside and our life at work. I think sometimes at your point is have fun with it, like carry that through and one thing I always encourage people for is when you get on a, a, a virtual sales call is switch your camera on, even if the other person doesn't or the other yes. people don't. Right. Switch mm -hmm. it on. And you because it it'll make such a difference um, mm -hmm. to their attitude to you. And yes, you can't see them. And ideally you could sometimes it'll encourage them to switch those on. But even if it doesn't, you have definitely taken a step forward in their perception of you. Absolutely. It does make it, you show up differently when your camera's on in virtual sales calls versus when you have it off. Like I've yeah. noticed the difference even in myself. Yeah. And obviously the other thing is to make sure that again, this distraction word, make sure there are no distractions because we know that this little, this little beast oh here gosh. is always yes. waving at you going, look at me, look at me. It's the most <laughs> narcissistic, narcissistic it, device ever. <laughs> it is. It is. <laughs> Um, so what do you where, where do you see the um, where do you see the future of sales going, um, Nadia? What do you think are the really important things and what do you think have, has has changed over the last one? And what, what are the lasting changes you think the pandemic have brought? Oh, my gosh. I guess, like you mentioned, I think virtual sales are, are here to stay. Um, I think that there obviously will be some in person, but um, as people get more comfortable with it, there are lots of reasons to support doing virtual um, I think it's really caused us as sales professionals to get more creative and to really bring out a different side of us because we were so used to doing things a certain way. And then we get the pandemic and it was like, what, wait, what, what is happening right now? So it's caused us to be creative, be a little innovative. Um, I think it's also shown us what we're really made of. You know, did we just have that moment of, I, I absolutely cannot move forward or, that we, you know, really be one of the ones to rally behind it. Like, all right, th these are the cards we've been dealt. How do we use these um, to move things forward? But I think that overall, some of the lasting changes are just, you know, how people perceive sales professionals. I think that that perception is shifting um, and we are being forced or encouraged <laughs> to, <laughs> you know, really position ourselves differently and show up differently. Um, and technology is actually our friend and can help support us in that. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. Um, and I think right now, just uh, as we underline that the, the topic for today, encourage, I think I, everything you say there is have the courage to experiment, have the courage to just dive in and say, OK, if I'm going to be selling virtual, you know what, I'm going to be the best virtual salesperson I can be. Yeah. I'm going to use the tech. And as your point is, I can use the technology to your advantage. Yes, yep, absolutely. Technology can really support you and take take things off your plate. Sometimes people look at technology as this is extra thing, but when you actually figure out a way to work in tandem with technology, it's, it's a beautiful process. Yeah, absolutely. Because at the end of the day, you want to be having meaningful conversations. You don't want to be doing a lot of rote or routine tasks that maybe technology can take care of for you. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> all right well, listen nadia this has been great so all of nadia's information is going to be below this video but before we go please do tell people a little bit more about you and the doyen agency awesome yeah so as uh, john mentioned i'm uh, dr nadia founder of the doyen agency we provide sales training um and uh, backroom sales support for companies and small businesses that's yeah, fantastic well i encourage you to check it out uh uh, as I said, the links will be below the video. Um, check out the Doyen Agency and Dr. Nadia Brown. Listen, thanks again for today. Some fantastic insights. Uh, and I hope it's encouraged everybody to find their courage. Encourage <laughs> you to so find your courage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. And thank you all for watching or listening. And I will see you for another chat really soon. Thank you. Yeah.